Namaste. My name is Vibhushit Tripathi and I welcome you to the second of the three video series on my selection at Baiju's for the role of academic specialist. In this video, I will explain the interview experience that I had with Baiju's with the academic manager. I will give you the link of the entire playlist at the in, in the video description. I recommend that you watch all the three videos because uh, as I have already discussed all the steps involved in the selection process and how, how I got selected, uh, it will help you to prepare ahead of uh, time for opportunities similar to buy choose where you can teach online and make some good amount of money. However, your communication skills play a major role in getting selected apart from your subject knowledge then uh, watch the third video about how I can help you out with your communication skills because I am really serious about helping people with science background and getting a job in science because uh, have getting a job in the academia or in the industries for those with uh, science as a subject is something that I would really love to see happening. All right, so let's get started with this uh, particular uh, uh, segment where I tell you about my interview experience. Uh, my uh, process is my subject was science, not math. So I'm going to give you the details that I was asked again. Uh, uh, first, I <clears throat> I need to tell you that the Baichus had given me certain instructions for the interview. Okay, they had given me some interviews. I have shown you that in the previous video that you're going you're gonna to have to refer to those instructions in the mail that you're going to receive. Once your uh, demo is selected, the first uh, demo is selected, then they will tell you that you need to go through an academic interview and uh, how you have to prepare all the instructions will be given in an email. Uh, so you need to follow those instructions and the important thing is that that your subject expertise up to 10th grade whether you choose science or math will matter but your fluency in pure communication in English will matter the most okay most of the candidates get rejected because not because they uh, do not have you know enough subject knowledge but they get rejected because of the lack of communication skills in English okay so you need to prepare for that now how I prepared for the interview so what I did is I selected a topic from the list they had given I selected a topic and, uh, and I prepared well for it by writing down uh, my flow how what kind of flow I would follow so I wrote it down on a piece of paper and I tried to rehearse that and that's how I prepared for the uh, demo that was gonna happen I ensured that I was uh, on a broadband because this is a must. You need to have a broadband and the Wi-Fi was working prop uh, should work properly. So you need to ensure that I did that. I made my laptop ready for the interview. So in order to avoid any kind of technical glitch uh, midway the interview, I had to make sure that my laptop has rebooted enough and doesn't have any clutter. So it can at least, uh, you know, do not it should not be giving me any trouble during the interview process so i had to make sure that i made sure that the zoom app was installed and working because the meeting would be taking place on zoom so you need to install the zoom application i as you can see i always use a usb headset for better sound quality for my own recordings as well as, as, well as for my professional meetings i already am working with my research project i work with study.com i I run my own physics blog where I uh, teach students so I always use a USB headset for best sound quality uh, in, in case you get selected for Vyjus I have heard that they send you a package where they also there is a USB headset included in that package so you will be having that I used ample lighting in the room that I shoot my studio I used ample lighting and when I say studio it doesn't mean that it's an expensive space so just a, a small room where I have my own setup so then I made it a point not to be late not to late I'm sorry not to be late even by a second so I was ahead of time I joined the meeting 
getting five minutes prior i was in the waiting room so i just made sure that i should not be late and again this is something also an important point that you should groom yourself and i suggest that you wear a shirt for professional appearance don't just uh, shoot uh, don't just shoot in a, a be on on the uh, on the call with the uh, with an uh, academic manager wearing a t-shirt or something so make sure that you wear a shirt for a better impression okay so i followed all these points for my interview preparation now the interview begins uh, well the interview begins with a courteous smile and uh, hello namaste as usual and then the interview segments the interview would have three segments first the introduction interviewer will introduce you and uh, tell her tell about herself and and then give you the outline of the interview then she will ask for your introduction and then she will ask a few questions on your professional experience and goals like what you have done what are your goals why join by juice and things like that the second part is the live demo up to 10th grade they will teach your uh, teaching skills uh, that you will not be able to share screen or write equations on uh, digital whiteboards. I mean, virtual whiteboards. You either you can write on a real whiteboard and using the camera, or you can point your camera to a pen and paper uh, on a paper where you can write using a pen. So, but I did not have those options, so I just chose to make it a story. I took the topic of gravity and talked and talked and talked because physics is my passion so I can keep on talking physics for days so that wasn't a big deal for me now the question and answer session will have 10 questions uh, either from science or math whatever subject you choose if it is in science then you have to choose two subjects one is for physics and uh, you have to choose two subjects uh, from physics, chemistry or, or bio okay either any co any combination of two subjects would, be, would do and uh, in that case you will have five questions from uh, like I had five questions from physics and questions from chemistry five questions from each subject if you choose science okay but if you choose math then all the ten questions will be from math the questions will be from easy to moderate level not very difficult questions okay so that is the overall interview segments now the intro in the introduction uh, segment she asked me to tell something about myself so what i did is i told her that hi my name is i didn't start with hi my name is ushit tripathi because that's was that part was already covered when she introduced herself and i replied so i, I started with the thing that as you have already known my name let me tell you about my professional experience i uh, I'm a master's. I'm a master in physics, a master of science in physics. I hold about uh, ten years of teaching experience as an educator, and I have taught on various platforms. I currently, uh, you know, run my own physics blog, and I do my own research project in cosmology. I have taught students uh, in India as well as uh, abroad online, and uh, I teach JE, NEET. Uh, gate jam just all these exam aspirants i have also taught ap physics one and two in the us okay so i uh, told her about my professional experience and she asked this question that why do you wish to teach 10th graders despite having the experience of teaching je and neat patches that's a valid point so i explained her i told her the truth don't try to hide anything don't fake anything in an interview because the interviewer already is prepared uh, that the interviewee would at some point lie so they are trained to catch those lies and they will ask cross questions and you will get caught okay but don't try that tell tell them the truth okay so i told her that yeah it's right i mean uh, for someone with a master's degree and already doing a research project would be teaching ninth and tenth might, might sound odd but i do have a tactical advantage in doing so because teaching in, uh, the ninth and tenth graders would not put me any pre pressure to prepare ahead of the classes and uh, it's a part-time option so i can easily devote lo a lot of my time most of my time doing my own research okay so that's the advantage that i get if i teach ninth and tenth graders she was satisfied and then she asked why do you wish to work for baiju as an academic specialist now that's a generic question that most companies ask why do you want to work for us so you need to tell some 
advantage some some salient features about the company and that particular job description uh, like i said that baiju is a champion in online education and uh, i believe that most of my time i should uh, focus on the quality of the content i deliver so if i i've already which is true that i have already got an offer from resonance akash uh to uh, and fitchi also to uh, become a member of the faculty for physics but then uh if i choose to go with them then i i shall have to go through the training uh, experience of course a lot of money will be there for the salary but then for me my time is more important than any amount of money so i only work for myself okay so i told her that that i have been offered such uh, jobs but then my focus is to mostly uh, do my own research and uh, the earning part comes for the time that i can spare from my research so and again traveling or living anywhere apart from my home my native place is something that would cost me a lot of money and time so uh, i would always prefer to work online that is how i can Uh, focus more on the quality of the content that I'm supposed to deliver. So I told her that, and she was pretty happy. Uh, and said that Baiju is an uh, is an excellent opportunity uh, to teach online. So I I think it'll be a good fit for uh, me to work for Baiju because I can contribute to the requirements Baiju have uh, from me. So that part is clear in the inter introduction segment. So now let's go. to the next slide the demo segment in the demo segment i chose gravity as the sub uh, you know as the topic i made it uh, uh, a short oral story because i could not use a whiteboard or paper but that's okay if you can do that also but the thing is that the way i made the story she forgot that the demo was of 5 minutes so at about 7th minute she stopped me and said that okay let's go to the q and a round she said she enjoyed the demo in fact so let me give you, tell you how i started the demo so i started uh, by asking a very simple question i said what is the one thing that comes to your mind right now if i tell you about gravity she said um, gravity the movie i said well it's about space isn't it, it you know uh, big things and satellites earth planets uh, stars galaxies solar systems big things i said yes of course i said there is another interesting movie interstellar which is mostly based on the concept of gravity but at a higher standard but these are all great movies but the uh, the gist is uh, when we talk about gravity we inherently think of huge things big things okay but there lies the biggest tyranny of nature because gravity the force of gravity or gravitational force is the weakest of the four fundamental forces in nature it's it's almost amazing how the smallest or the weakest force of nature manages to hold huge things in place so that's what makes gravity interesting um then i moved on to a brief history of uh, the knowledge uh, framework of gravity that we have right now i said that uh, in the ancient indian culture in the ancient indian civilization we had astronomers and physicists who did uh, some research on gravity namely aryabhatta brahmir and brahmagupta all of them came up with uh, uh, various great concepts of gravity known as gurutvakarshan in sanskrit and uh, they have uh, written a lot of beautiful texts on gravity and in western culture also uh, the greek civilization had some uh, sort of uh, idea about gravity however this serious and methodical approach uh, to understand gravity started with johannes kepler who studied the cosmos especially our own solar system and came up with three laws uh, now for the first one is the law of uh, orbits the second one is the law of uh, periods and the third one is uh, sorry so the second one is the law of areas and third one is the law of periods i could have explained you better if i had the access of uh, writing down equations and drawing diagrams but since i don't have it so let's just move on and tell that galileo took up the ideas uh, developed by uh, kepler and he did his own experiments and came up with the suggestion that 
probably there is some commonality between the laws that govern the motion of the uh, motion in the cosmos in in this in space as and uh, the motions happening on earth so that was galileo work, reading uh, the works of uh, Gal uh, kepler and galileo newton actually did a beautiful summary okay the newton's brilliance or uh, the genius of mathematics that uh, newton was what he did is his he came up with a beautiful mathematical correlation between the laws in of the cosmos and the laws in on earth laws of motion apart from his uh, laws of motion he came up with the law of universal gravitation which simply says that uh, if there are two objects that have mass then uh, the force between them is going to be attractive they will be mutually attracting each other and the strength of that force is going to be directly proportional to the product of their masses and uh, for example two objects uh, are there uh, one is of 2 kg one is of 3 kg the product of the masses is 6 kg so the product increases as the product of the masses increases the strength of the force increases however the force is inversely proportional to the square of their mutual separation for example if the same two objects are at a separation of 2 meters and then we increase the separation at we double the separation then uh, it will be the the force you know will be one fourth in strength however it will always remain attractive okay so that was newton's ideas and then he has written that equation equals to uh, as f equals to minus g m1 m2 by r squared where uh, g is the universal gravitational constant and the beautiful thing about newton's theory uh, is that he just told us that the falling of an apple on earth is exactly the same as the orbit as the moon orbiting our earth um, or any planet orbiting the sun or any satellite orbiting its planet because the moon when orbiting earth is doing nothing but constantly falling towards earth just like an apple falls to earth however the moon does not touch earth it's because it has the exact velocity that is required for it uh, for it to continue in its orbit okay that's why if we throw an apple with this with the required or uh, or you know the required speed the apple would keep orbiting earth as well but that requires an enough speed which is what we call uh, the escape speed the minimum speed is the escape speed which is 11.2 kilometers per second that's the speed we need to impact one object so that it can escape the influence of gravity so that is something that uh, uh, newton had shown so that that makes it like a uniform correlation that the motion on on a planet are not something different from the motions happening in the space or anywhere in the universe that actually is proves that science the laws of science are universal no matter wherever you are the same laws of physics apply okay so physics is universal so that's the beauty of newton's work in describing the universal law of gravitation so it is at this point she stopped me and uh then she moved on to the q and a segment in the q and a segment i was asked uh, five questions from physics and five questions from uh, chemistry i was not very confident about chemistry though because i haven't taught chemistry for ages for for years okay but then since i understand each and every subject scientifically so the foundation that i understood of, of for chemistry worked for me i answered all of the questions correctly let's go through the the questions uh, first question is what gives rise to pressure okay so that is the question and i told her that when we talk about pressure you have to uh, think of liquids and uh, uh, gases and uh, liquids and solids differently because gases uh, for gases the pressure comes because the molecules of the gases they want to expand however if you want to contain them you are basically applying a force on them so by newton's third law uh, this action force gets a reaction force from the molecules on the walls of the container and that is what we understand as pressure however for solids and liquids since they are incompressible you are pushing them uh, again that is uh, the same concept as gases when you uh, try to 
reduce their volume okay that there you will be getting a reaction force that causes the pressure by definition pressure is the force per normal area okay unit normal force per unit normal area so that basically it's the reaction force that you get from solids liquids or gases but then with uh, with with uh, liquids um what happens is with when we are in an uh, in a gravitational field with depth the pressure increases that's because of the gravity hydrostatic pressure so then she asked me how does pressure vary with height i said when you uh, when you in go up of course the height of the column of liquid or solid <coughs> uh, you know reduces so pressure decreases with height now third question is a third question is what are the three factors affecting atmospheric pressure so i told her that the pressure p equals to rho g h so as you go higher and higher in the atmosphere the density decreases gravity the field of gravity also gets weak as you go farther from earth so rho decreases g decreases and h as you you know go with height then the rho and g they decrease so the pressure decreases even if height increases the uh, because of rho and g the pressure decreases okay so the third question is like why is the direction of electric current taken from positive to negative terminals i told her that basically a convention because when electric current was discovered electrons were not discovered so we didn't actually know what is moving we thought positive charge is moving so we took took the direction of electric current as the direction of the movement of the positive charge but then after the discovery of electrons we understood that the, the positive charges in a wire do not move it's the electrons which move in the opposite direction which we thought would be the direction of the positive charge so we did not choose to change our definition we still take electric current to be the direction of the movement of the positive charge or in the opposite direction of the movement of the electrons as a uh, just a matter of convenience it's a convention right now the fifth question is uh, why does a needle sink in water but uh, a float on water that's the archimedes principle okay the archimedes principle so i explained that uh, as a it's the point force that helps uh, uh, anything uh, floating on water for a needle the point force is very weak and for the ship the point force is very high it balances the weight so in for any object that uh, in 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 a liquid especially in water the weight force will lag downward the point force will lag upward for something to float the force has to balance the weight or burnt force has to be higher than the weight only then the object uh, would float but then the buoyant force depends on the weight of the liquid displaced by the object when it is put in water or in the liquid a needle has very less volume so it does not display uh, displace a lot of water so the weight of the displaced water is very less as compared to the weight of the needle so the needle sinks but but point force is less but for a ship it has huge volume so it uh, displaces a huge volume of water which has a lot of weight that can balance the weight of the ship so a ship floats on water so i explained this now she asked me uh, five questions from chem she gave me a choice whether i could choose from uh, uh, bio and chemistry i chose chemistry the first question is what is the uh, valency of an atom the valency on, on of an atom is the number of electrons it uh, gives or takes in order to form a bond to satisfy the octet rule okay i gave an example for example if you take uh, you know if you take hydrogen it always wants to accept an electron so that it gains the uh, configuration of helium which is a noble gas helium has uh, uh, satisfied octet a rule so uh, hydrogen accepts one uh, it accepts one electron so its valency is one and uh, however for chlorine chlorine has you know uh, seven electrons in its outermost 
till it's 17 so 2 8 7 so to satisfy the uh, octet rule it you know giving up seven electrons takes a lot of energy but accepting just one electron uh, is really you know easy okay so what happens is the valency of chlorine is one again by accepting an ele electron um, then she asked about what about the valency of uh, carbon i said the carbon has four electrons uh, in the outer shell however uh, you know it's, it's you know to gain octet uh, configuration it either gives needs to give four electrons or get four electrons uh, and you know this process giving or accepting four electrons again is a tedious process so what carbon does is it forms covalent bond mostly okay in that way it is the it strikes a good balance okay. it satisfies the optic rule in covalent bonds and it also satisfies its uh, octet rule so i explained that and then oh my chemistry is not that good but then uh, i got uh, satisfactory answers and then uh, number two what are valence electrons so valence, valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shell of an atom okay now what is an what is the octet rule i said this is the octet rule as i've said that uh, octet rule says that unless it is just one orbit uh, the external orbit would always try to have uh, eight electrons for any atom but just for one orbit if that is the first orbit if it is external then for example as helium has only one or orbit so the external orbit would have only two electrons that's the octet rule and then uh, she asked why do we use uh, milk of magnesia to treat acidity it's simple uh, milk of magnesia is basically a base so when we in you know ingest it what it ha what happens in a stomach there is biological acids which cause acidity so milk of magnesia being a base neutralizes that acid and uh, treats acidity so i answered that i asked she asked about what are metalloids i said metalloids are those elements which have uh, a mixture of properties matching to non metals and metals okay non metals and metals so that part was answered so these are the questions that i answered and then next move on to the next side the interview concludes after q and a round it took about 20 minutes or so and here she i think from the way the you know the academic manager or the interviewer concludes your interview gives you a an informed guess about your upcoming result of the interview because if she interrupt you know ends the meeting without uh, you know proceed giving you any extra information then unfortunately you might have failed but then for me she went on to discuss the actual salary structure told me about the incentives and all the onboarding process the training periods and the, the shift slots and durations and things like that about tds and all and leave policy so i had a good idea that probably i made it okay so but then you never know the next interview uh, part is like see that i had i told you how the interview process went the most important part of the interview was that my i had good communication skills see for physics i might be having great subject knowledge but in chemistry i said that i do not i accepted that i haven't taught chemistry for a very long time so i might not be able to give you the exact answer but then i still made it even if my chemistry isn't that good i still made it why because of my communication skills the way i speak and i i articulate my expressions so i got selected now the important message for students and researchers in science is that see i i would love to see you guys get good earning opportunities apart from your passion in research and in science you do have to earn something to manage your, your expenses for that you need jobs and business opportunities so my message to you is that academia is getting so congested that you most of you would have to move to industries to work for jobs like this okay and these industries are getting global in nature so excellent communication skills in english is going to be really important for you to get these jobs 
and uh, you need to have the competence in english so for you what i can do is like if you have sub any help if you need some help in uh, in physics as a subject but you need to you know enhance your subject knowledge then you can connect with my physics blog the physicist.in and um, i can help you there but if it's uh, your english where you need some help you know there are a lot of uh, free resources available online on youtube and elsewhere you can go through them however um i understand that if it is you know, when when it comes to english it's it's a language you know you, you cannot read and get language skills okay by reading you will have only theoretical knowledge but when it comes to actual practice okay you need to have conversational classes okay where you can talk and uh, your teacher could actually point out your mistakes while you talk okay so practicing conversations real conversations would uh, you know they are a must if you want good communication skills that will help you get better jobs and business opportunities good communication skill is must and you need to actually take part in participatory conversations right so if you want i have, i'm going to make the third video on uh, on how i can help you you know get your communication skills better i am not a teacher of english yeah but i do have uh, great experiences uh, and you know where i have ex exercised my skills in talking to british and american clients and uh, you know i have never been rejected uh, due to lack of communication skills so i think i can help you guys i have uh, made a plan i have created a course for you guys if you want you can watch the third video and uh, you can see how if you can benefit from from my program okay that is especially for you guys okay it's it's not that i run english classes or something like that but uh, when i saw that a lot of people are getting rejected and a lot of job opportunities coming uh, in the future uh, would require uh, good communication skills in english i thought i should be helping my science community by helping them get better jobs so if you need my help for your interview preparation you can mention in the comments i will try to answer them for physics you can always visit the physicist.in/ask uh, if you have any doubts i'll answer them but uh, if you need some uh, help in developing your professional communication skills you can watch the third video and go to the description in that video for the links where you can get in touch with me and thank you very much for watching and i wish you all the best if you are already preparing for byjus or any such uh, interview process i really wish that you get that job thank you very much